Hello, I'm going to be showing you how to set up this enzyme lab and what procedures you'll need to take to make some measurements. In this lab, you're going to be measuring the reaction rate of an enzyme which is found in most living cells, um, including yeast. And so this mixture of yeast and water um, has an enzyme in it called catalase. Catalase reacts with another molecule uh, called hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, uh, which you may have gotten in a bottle like this. Hydrogen peroxide does not break down very quickly unless it's mixed with this enzyme, catalase, and if it does, it makes oxygen gas, and the production of that gas is what we're going to measure uh, to measure how fast the reaction is occurring. The basic setup that I'm going to show you here will allow you to set up an experiment where you can test some variables such as temperature or pH to see which temperature or which pH catalase reacts fastest in. So to do this, we first want to take our catalase mixture. This mixture is 100% catalase. We can't make a master mixture that is more concentrated than this here. So this is 100%. If you're measuring something like temperature or pH, you'll want to stay at the 100% master mixture. So first we're gonna transfer some of this uh, catalase mixture over to our environmental container. So I'm gonna put 10 milliliters of the catalase into this beaker. To do that, with a pipette, um, right at the corner here, uh, there's a little line and it should say one milliliter. So the container up to that corner in this pipette measures one milliliter. And so you can put 10 milliliters into your environmental container. Now let me do that real quick. Okay, so now I have 10 milliliters here. Um, if I wanted to make a dilution of this, instead of doing 10 full milliliters of our 100% catalase, I would do like 8 milliliters plus 2 milliliters of water. That would make an 8 to 2, that would make an 80% solution. Um, if I wanted to do something smaller, I might do 4 milliliters of catalase to 6 milliliters of water, which would be a 40% solution. I could go all the way down to 10% catalase uh, by doing 1 milliliter to 9 milliliters of water. Uh, but in this basic setup, we're going to st stick with our 100% catalase. If I were to measure temperature, I want to adjust the temperature of this catalase. So I would then put this container either in a cold water, an ice water bath, or a hot water bath to change the temperature of this enzyme before we started our experiment. Um, same thing if I wanted to measure pH, I would add something like hydrochloric acid to lower the pH and then measure the pH of this, uh, paying attention to the fact that if I add a milliliter of this hydrochloric acid, I am diluting the enzyme over here. Or if I wanted to raise the pH, I could add sodium hydroxide to my environmental mixture, also knowing that any addition of hydrogen peroxide um, would dilute the 100% mixture here. Uh, di having it diluted is fine, you'll just need to keep track of that and be able to report it in your um, lab write-up. Now, before we get our, uh, before we can start measuring the reaction of this catalase with hydrogen peroxide, we're gonna have to set up our experimental apparatus. Um, in order to do this, we are going to be using this test tube, a hose, uh, a stopper with a hole in it, and then this bath with a graduated cylinder uh, that I have submerged in the water uh, until it was completely full with water, and then I kept the open end submerged while lifting the rest of it up. So you may not be able to see it right now, but this graduated cylinder is completely filled with liquid, and I'll show you why that's important in a moment. I'm going to go ahead and start off by setting up my uh, tubes. Uh, to do this, I'll take a plastic pipette like this, remove the bulb off the top. Once you have this um, open tube, you're going to insert the fat end into your hose, so that makes a nice seal, and then insert the pointy end 
into uh, the stopper uh, on the big side, the top of the stopper. So insert that in. Uh, be careful when you're pushing these in that you don't snap the plastic uh, because then you'll have to restart. I'm going to set this up right now before we add our catalase, uh, but know that when you do this in your experiment, you'll be adding the catalase and hydrogen peroxide to this test tube before you put the stopper on. But I want to show you how you put the stopper on. You'll want to keep the test tube facing up once you have the mixture in there. Uh, and then you'll take the stopper and just insert it in the top. Now be careful about how hard you press down, because if you press too hard, it can shatter the test tube, and then you have broken glass as you're pushing down, and you will stab yourself, cut yourself, and bleed all over the place. Also, if you don't insert the test tube in far enough, um, it might just pop out, ruining your experiment. So you'll want to find that nice balance of snugness, uh, but not shoving it in too far. Now, when you put your catalase uh, in with the substrate, the hydrogen peroxide, it'll start reacting and producing oxygen gas right away. Now, our goal is to measure that oxygen gas. We're going to be measuring how much gas is produced as a measurement of how fast the reaction is occurring. So once you get the things mixed into this test tube, you'll want to stopper it and put this tube into our graduated cylinder as quick as possible. And so I want to show you how to do that. Once you have it stopped up like this, you can just take the tube, insert it quickly under the water, and up into the graduated cylinder. Now, right now, I just did that very quickly. There is nothing in this test tube, um, and yet I can cause it to make bubbles. If I just hold it with my hand, the warmth from my hand will increase the volume of the gas in, that's already in the tube, and that gas will come out. So if I hold this, you'll start to be able to see some gas bubbles. Now I'll show you um, how to set this up, and we'll watch the uh, lab run pretty quickly. So I'm going to take my 10 milliliters of uh, catalase extract, insert it into my um, test tube. Um, I can then rinse this out. Now that it's clean, I can use the same container. Using a new pipette, I can use 3 milliliters of my hydrogen peroxide. Now, 3 milliliters is just how much I'm using. Um, if you decide to use a different amount, um, you can do that, but you'll need to justify why you used a different amount. Um, and now I'm going to pour my hydrogen peroxide into my container. Um, as soon as I do that, I'll need to stop it and insert it into the tube, um, and then I'll show you how the bubbles are being created. Now it's very important that you keep your test tube pointed up so any gas that gets formed actually goes out the tube. If you flip this over, it'll push the yeast liquid up through the tube, which will go through the uh, container. So if we then come over here and take a look, see if I can get it to focus, you can see that gas is being made. And now to measure that, you'll need to, during this time, uh, be taking a time measurement and be watching near the top to see how many milliliters of gas are being created over a certain amount of time. Now this lab is only running uh, for like 30 seconds or so, and already I've made multiple milliliters of gas. Um, and so you'll be need you'll measure how much gas is made over a certain amount of time um, and record that in order to communicate how fast this reaction rate is going. You can see that there are bubbles being made in this test tube. Now, one last important note is if I were if I were to grab this test tube with my hand, the warmth of my hand would change the temperature of the enzyme and would change the temperature of the gas in here, causing it to expand. So you can either leave your test tube sitting like this, or you can use a clamp such as this, 
um, if you need to hold your test tube, um, hold it not with your hands um, so the warmth from your hand doesn't affect the experiment. So I think that's um, all that uh, is the most necessary to know and hopefully you'll find interesting ways to adjust some of the variables that we're doing here to discover some interesting information about um, this enzyme catalase and how it works. John.